Picardy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't do I don't do the stage here. Come on, man. Hey, it's all you. Charlie, can't you hide his face? No. Pass me a piece of paper. <laughs> just just in case we want to just uh, show a background. Can we move closer? Yeah, you can. Let's do that. Yeah. No, it's not pretty clear, Charlie. Uh, Better light, eh? Okay, done. <laughs> 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 okay guys, so Gordon asked me to uh, demo a soft, a soft tackle technique and uh, when we originally discussed this we said we would do it on a Zach, sort of soft tackle Zach, but if you traditionally tie a Zach you would tie the tackle in with the body material, so I'm going to bastardize this quite heavily and because the materials we have here for the body are with traditional Zach materials, peacock curl, um, and flash and some and some copper rib. Uh, I'll try and stick to those as much as possible. If if I was to tie a soft tackle, I probably wouldn't tie a Zach body. To be dead honest, I would just do a dubbing body with a with a wire rib. Much quicker and uh, a little bit less frustrating. But I'll try and bet as it will illustrate how to tie with these uh, these peacock curls as best as possible. So we're tying on a ten. It's a it's actually a size 10, it's not a size 14, it's a S10 2S, so it's the short shank, if I'm right, is it S2S, the yeah. short shank? Um, it's a nice big big hook with a, quite a wide gape. Um, I think it's it's nice to demo. It's probably the biggest I would tie a soft tackle myself, unless I was tying, tying a streamer, like a soft tackle streamer, something along those lines. Otherwise, I generally tie like 12, 14, 16. That's my standard size. Um, Soft hackle selection. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert, but I know that you get them from partridges. <laughs> um, you can also use mallard. Very nice if you're going to do a streamer pattern. Got very long feathers. They separate quite nicely. Uh, over a streamer body, you get a real sort of minnow pattern with that sort of scaled mottling down sides. Looks really awesome. So the nice expensive option is uh, Hungarian partridge. Very pretty. I like to just keep it to look at. Um, but it gives you a, it gives you a, it gives you a great selection of feathers. I mean, you've got up at the front, you've got these uh, slightly larger ones right towards the neck. They get tiny again. Back of the feathers, you've got or the on the back, these sort of Walker's killer type looking little quills, very nice. The wings give you long. Can you see that? A really long sort of hackle. Yeah. That's your focus point. Okay, that's nice. Um, a friend of mine shot me a few partridge of different varieties and they're also awesome. These are local ones, so they're in good supply. <laughs> this is the Natal Franklin. Thanks, Tris. But I've got the Swanson's in here as well. And the, I think it's the Red Faced. Red Faced? What's that one called? Could be partridge. Yeah. Um, so these are quite lacquer. Red winged just, partridge. Red winged, okay. So I've picked a, a couple of feathers off here just to, to take a look at. When you pick it raw, it looks like that quite messy so in terms of preparation I look at the look at the length of the actual the, the feather fibers if I could call them that down the side and just compare them to your hook I mean that's that's pretty much what you're going to stretch out over the front of the feather so or over the front of the hook so you know depending on what you want to achieve if you can get a feather that's slightly longer than the shank of the hook obviously it's going to make a nice sort of umbrella right down towards the tail uh, something shorter is going to stand out more parachute style. I don't know. It's just uh, I, I would just compare it to the to the total length of the hook, sort of along those lines. If that makes sense. That's kind of what we're going for. Um, and we'll tie all the way back to about that point on the feather. 
the top, the top of the feather, the very tip, we're gonna, you're gonna disregard. If you look at some of the other feathers, they look completely different. Much shorter, a little bit more challenging to tie with. Will work better on a smaller hook. You can see you don't have as much, as much material to work with. So don't get yourself into a pickle with a, a very short feather like this. It's going to be tough to tie with. It's going to challenge you, and you're going to have very few hackles to actually get around the hook. Um, Preparation-wise, I mean, as far as hackle techniques go, yes, there's, there's so many ways to do this. For tonight's, for tonight's fly, I'm going to actually just strip the one side of the, the feather. Just start by ripping off all the stuff at the bottom, all the really fluffy junk that you don't need, just to expose the, the shank like that. Can we see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then from the top, just keep a little, a little bunch. If you split the feather neatly like that, just want to keep the top because you're going to tie that in, and then just shred one side off completely. All right, so that's your hackle, hackle prepped, and hang on to that. Hopefully the wind doesn't take it. Okay, so I mean, like I said, I'm not too phased about this body. The, the purpose is just to build up a quick body and a tail. Um, tails, again, you can use whatever you prefer. Cock de Leon. I've got some some more sort of fibrous hackle here that you can just help yourselves to. You only need about five or six of these feathers. So to start, just uh, tie onto the hook. I'm using uh, 6 thread olive. You can use black, brown, olive, whatever you prefer. Nothing, nothing is uh, special about the thread. Okay, then just choose your choose your tail fibers. You just need a small small bunch, like 10 feathers or 10 10 little points. Again, tail length not phased. Maybe a third of the third of the length of the hook sticking over the bat, like such. Just tie that down. Okay. Then, if you if you follow the the Zach by the book, the way I read it just before I got here. <laughs> 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 you know, okay, I just want to talk something about the Zach. This, the Zach's undergone a mega evolution over the years. So even Tom himself has about four or five different ways of doing this. A lazy way to do it is to take three hurls mm -hmm. and partially strip them. So no stories of stripped and unstripped. Yeah. Because mm. one version asks for three stripped quills with one unstripped quill with copper wire, a bit of DMC thread, and then they twist that all in a row. The lazy version, and it gives you the exact same effect, yeah. just partially strip three. So you put them in your in your left hand, thumb, index finger, and you just do that. Yeah. So I'll just demo that quickly. I'm, I'm not really going to bother with stripped, because these are they're so fine. Uh, to me, it makes no difference. I want to build up a nice body so you can see a body. If you want to strip them, my advice, sit outside, take a handful of these feathers and go and strip them and save them because it's just it's quite messy. I think Murray's demoed it before that you can buy those little rubber thimbles. I think they actually use them for counting cash. They're quite lacquer. You just need one of those on your finger and you just if you rub this opposite to the direction without breaking it of the the grain, you just rub it a few times, eventually all the fiber comes off and you end up with a a very stripped quill. If you strip it completely, they're awesome for little bodies of um, emerges and clinks and things like that. Jeez, it's a really buggy looking body, but you know I'm happy with that. So take two or three or four, or it depends how much you want to build up the body. Like Gordon said, I think this thing is so bastardized and there's so many different versions. It's really up to you. Um, sorry, let me tie in a piece of copper just at the back. This is nice just to give your body a little bit of strength when you wrap, wrap it forward. Okay, thin copper wire, there you've got it. Okay, now I'm going to tie this in from the front back. I guess you could tie it from the back forward, whatever you're comfortable with. It's no biggie. Just when you do choose your peacock hurl, don't make the mistake of starting to tie in 
too far at the base or too close to the base. It's quite it's quite thick and not very uh, pliable. It's, it, if you tie it in, it'll probably snap. So just move a little bit up the up the, sh the shaft of the feather. I don't know. These are hair. Huh? Oh really? Okay. What Gary said, you can wet it. I've got uh, the, the feathers I'm tying with are these really really long quills. I don't know if you can get these anymore. If you if you find them, I suppose you're quite lucky because everyone sort of drools over them when they see them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for me, the, just the complete base of this thing is is too it's too hard to work with. So I just clip some of it off. I'm not really going to bother with the flash tonight, guys. I'm, uh, the flash that we've got is really really thick. If you want to, you can stretch it a bit. Look at that lacquer UV. And it sort of effect. gives it quite a nice UV effect, but it, it's. Look, I mean, it's like rope, this stuff. Eh? And and the in the original form, it's very, it's very, very, very broad. Okay, so tied in about, I don't know what that is, five mils behind the eye of the hook. And then, if you watch Gary Stephens tie this, he can give you a demo on the body. Yes, he does a really amazing body where he actually twists the the copper wire around the fibers. I, I just, to me, like that's awesome. It looks really fantastic. I just don't don't take the time to do that. So once you've got these in here, just give them a bit of a spin. It's painful. I suppose you could plait them. I think Gary plaits them. <laughs> I think he, I think he practices... He, he, uh, <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> My object is, or well, the objective for me is just get the feathers on the hook. Eh? Alright. Now just... Going the wrong way. Yeah. Ah, okay. no, don't, don't do that, eh? <laughs> what was that, Chip? Steam it. No. What does it do? Soften it. No. That's why. That's why I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Wrap your thread around the twist of hell, or the coil around around the thread. Strengthen it. <laughs> okay, so you can just go around the front a few times, build up a nice head. You want to build up a bit of a taper. And then just take it down to the back of the fly, like such. And then just trap it under your under your copper wire and then wind the copper up evenly to the front and just tie that off I'm going to clip the ones off at the back Done. And I see I made a bit of a mess in the front here with the the hurl. You can clip it if you want, you don't have to. Don't use your scissors for this. Mine have got a little bite at the back for the wire. Wrap it down. Okay, now I haven't left myself too much space at the front here, so I'm going to try and be smart. So the hurl that you prepared, uh, the hackle that you prepared earlier. Sorry. Hold it by the tip and just pull those feathers back, those fibers back and you can clip this little top piece off quite close. You just want to give yourself a little bit of a stem to tie in. Okay, now the trick here is you want to keep this uh, concave side facing the facing the, sh the shank of the hook so that it sort of parachutes backwards. If you turn it the other way, they're all going to stick out at funny angles, kind of like this first fly tied here, it's a bit of a mess. But this is the effect that you're looking for, if you can see that. So it's, ba it's basically like an umbrella, kind of, eh? Yeah. Okay, so, concave side facing down. Just grab the little tip there. And wind it forward. 
as you wind it forward, I guess you could use the hackle pliers if you so choose. I prefer not to with such a big fly. Just keep striking the feather back so that you don't pinch the fibers underneath the, the wraps. You just want to keep parting them and striking them backwards. Okay. As many as you feel happy with. It's up to you. Seriously, it depends on how thick you want to make it. If you want it to be quite sparse, fewer turns, I'd go at least three or four. I've got myself right up against the eye. Pretty much. Okay. I've tied this on backwards, so it's going to be a little bit... Trap the stem underneath the, the thread. You can clip off the excess, and then just I just tease it out. I suppose I mean you could use a needle for this, or and just whip, make a little head. I think the Zach had a bead, so this technique applies. I mean you just tie it in behind the bead, and then just whip finish. Try not to trap any of the hackle fibers. I think the original attack was before the beat. It's a junk everywhere. How does it look on camera? Yeah, tight. And Byron, where? Okay, okay let, let's talk about fishing these things. Where, where, when, how, why? Okay, I, I fish them all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I love I love having one on my rig wherever whatever I'm fishing for. If I'm fishing for yellows, I'll have one like late evenings as an emerge or late afternoons as an emerger pattern, just swinging it through a through a current as it as it rises up, they go crazy for it. Trout, I mean, I think the cruncher patterns and those those are fairly similar to this. They're like quite spidery, and you can just fish them subsurface. They work quite well. I don't know. I think they work all the time. Really, for me, awesome. Very light. Uh, I guess if you chuck a bead on it, it just goes goes down a bit faster. You can fish it quite deep. But uh, I, I love them for, for yellows. I think they're awesome. Just subsurface, even as a, with a very light bead, as a, as a dropper below a dryer, they, they're fantastic too. Um, I mean, it's up to you guys. Also, when you like fishing like emerging pupa, caddis pupa, you'll see the pupa's got a lot of appendages. It's got feelers. It's got like wing buds. It's got legs. It's got... And those fibers, those mottled fibers, imitate that quite nicely. What you could also do is, if you dub that, say, with a, with spiky guard heads, and you rub a little bit of beeswax in there, little bubbles would cling to the stuff. And, and, and very often, some, a, a fact which, which a lot of guys aren't really aware of is a lot of uh, species of, of caddis and mayfly, after they've emerged, actually go back down. The adults go down and lay their eggs. If you go to the vault, pick up any rock, and you'll see little eggs neatly laid like that. The adults actually go down. And what happens is, they uh, they go down and they use a system called plastron breathing. He takes a bubble with him, or she takes a bubble with him. And, and that beeswax on the dubbing imitates that bubble effect quite nicely. It acts as a trigger. So you, you could also do that. Fishies You could also put a clear glass bead on. Yeah. You could put a clear glass bead on. But you know what I also like is um, I like fishing these unweighted as well. You know, on, on like a top dropper. Yeah. So that. Yeah. So you're fishing various columns of water. you not your flies aren't all in the bottom. Because think about this when yeah. when when, when people are emerging. Can use some of this as well. They are swimming through the gauntlet as Peter Brick calls it. Mm. So they they're going through these columns of water. So that's nice fishing patterns at various depths. Fish a couple, like three. Yeah, I mean, color-wise as well, this is it's entirely up to you, whatever patterns you find you prefer. I, I like the a slightly grayer, grayer pattern, gray and white, so the body would be a, a hair's ear, gray body with a, a black, white, and gray speckled hackle, hackle feather. Um, but really, it's 
preference is yours. You can get you can get these in any color you like, in olives, blacks, whatever you prefer. Oh, you've got ones there in brown. Yeah, yeah some. Do you think the tail's No, not at all there. Eh? I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even bother with a tail. But I, you know what? Put it. Put it in, and if you don't like it, pull it out. So. Let's let's just look at that fly. That's a very nice soft hackle. Now let's look at the qualities that make that a good fly. The umbrella effect. If you if you look at the way the soft hackles actually move backwards. Now the Japanese, the Tenkara guys, have an, they tie that thing the opposite way around. They call it Tenkara kabari. <coughs> And, and apparently they say that it gives the pattern more movement. But I would like to tend to think that tying in this umbrella style, if you look at emerging uh, pupa or whatever, the, 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 the appendages are sort of like an umbrella. They suck to the body of the fly, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so that umbrella effect is quite nice. Also, if you look at the body, you want a tapering, a tapering body. It mustn't be too bulky. And look at the tail. He hasn't used too many fibers. Less is more. You just want a couple of fibers. It mustn't be... If you think about natural insects, very often we overdress patterns. Yeah. We hoit too much material on. So, less is more. Keep it... Like, for that soft tackle, generally, I hoit two wraps. Yeah. I think if I, if I was doing a 14 or a 16, I wouldn't do yeah. more than two wraps. It would be very, very sparse. Yeah. And tail, very light. Uh, Cocktail is... My, well, it's my favorite for tailing but don't, on a fly like this. Like yeah. So yeah, cool. and like, like Byron also says, when you fish them, you can swing them through. So at the end of the drift, as drag starts to set in, just lift it up and let them swing through the, through the collar. <coughs> These also make, make quite like a soft tackles, a Coctelion um, whole saddle. Nice and, nice and fibrous, very bristly. The f the very long. The f I mean, when you when you when you when you wrap them, you'll see they don't stick together at all. They don't. They don't. They don't cling at all. They're completely. Okay, I mean, look at those. Very cool, Byron. Yeah. Cool man. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>